And welcome back. Well, we are backstage at the moment with Health, who are here for this massive tour that a lot of people have been looking forward to for a long, long time. We know a lot of our listeners out there are really looking forward to these shows. So uh, we've got Jake with us at the moment. So uh, Jake, welcome to Melbourne. Thank you for having us. No We're worries. excited to be here. Now, mate, the last couple of years have been absolutely crazy for you guys. How do you feel being here in Australia for this amazing tour? Well, we love coming to Australia. I think I was remarking to, I can't recall who, but it's kind of one of the only places that we've just always had good shows from the jump. Like the first time we came over many years ago, I think that the audiences here just seemed to connect with the music. Yeah, Um, yeah. And it's like sort of the most akin to the sort of audience and fan base that we have in the United States. So it kind of feels almost like an extension of that so yep. it's very comfortable um yep. and being from not to be presumptuous but being from california like there is something about australia that is like very much i feel almost more comfortable in australia than i do on the east coast of the united states yeah it's almost like it's more similar than it is to be in baltimore or in philadelphia yeah well, a lot of people come here and they go down to st kilda and they say it could be like the strip in in like LA and places like that like there's a a real it's a European city technically Melbourne like with the way it was developed but a lot of people say it's a lot more like California than Europe so yeah and some of the I think some of the environment feels like like kind of like NorCal like we can call like San Francisco um, but yeah we love it here and I think we always have great experiences yeah now we mentioned it's been a bit of a crazy last couple of years for you guys especially with Rat Wars coming out and doing so well how do you feel at the moment like do you pinch yourself thinking what the last couple of years have been like i mean it's definitely been surreal to have been doing this so long and then i think it really is just having perspective on it you can kind of see how you never really know what how something is going to react and i think when bands are young and the first record they put out just explodes they go from buzz band to just being like all over the place there's some sort of maybe narcissistic tendency to believe like, oh yeah, we're awesome. And that's why um, this is responding yeah. and resonating with people. But the truth of it is just so much more complex. It's like all the different things that have to kind of coalesce, not just in the music you're making, but being in a moment where the material is connecting with people and it's like a time that is... Um, opportune for it all to sort of fall into place and i think that in certain ways we're just lucky to have kind of kept at it yeah. and still felt creatively engaged yeah because i think that's the biggest thing and the most rewarding thing for me is that it was an important record for me and i felt very much emotionally um tied to it and so to see people respond to it is very rewarding yeah you, you guys also have kind of done it the hard way as well. Like, you've evolved your sound over the years to, to get to where you are today as well. Were those difficult decisions along the way to make? Like, so many bands these days, it feels like they start out and that's how they stay, whereas you guys have evolved constantly. Is that something that, that you think about as well? I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of... Um virtue to doing that in terms of staying creatively stimulated yeah and that's always sort of been a mandate that we've given ourselves on an aesthetic level is that we feel like each record should be a significant doesn't even have to be a leap forward it can be lateral or whatever but just some sort of evolution so that it does not sound like the record that preceded it um and i think that part of that is we're lucky enough to have that facility or that latitude to explore that way because referencing what you're talking about bands that have this incredibly formed sound that is easily digestible and sort of by osmosis transmits to all these people yeah that puts them in a difficult position of if they change too much it alienates their fan base yeah yeah yeah. um and I think that people feel a lot of pressure. Like if you're a band like Interpol, you know, people want you to sound like Interpol because it's beloved. Yeah. And yeah. we don't, you know, the earlier iterations of our band, like 
there's not like any hits or anything that we have to be beholden to. Yeah. It's just like, I want this sort of setup and orientation of the production. It's like, and our fans seem pretty willing to go with us where it can just be eclectic and be explorative. Yeah. But it also feels like it's been very natural for you guys as well. Like it doesn't feel like it's a, hang on a minute, that's not working. We've got to do this. It's always felt very natural for you guys. Like the, like I think when I reviewed Rat Wars, I said this is like an album of a generation. Like it felt so special. Um, like is that something that you feel as well? That it's just been a natural possession rather than going out and forcing yourself to do something. So, I, for whatever reason, I would say that the Rat Wars was the most natural and and easiest record that we've ever written. Yeah. Um, not easy for me, especially personally and emotionally at the time but the actual act of making the music. And I think part of that was like feeling, after doing two collaborative records, like feeling excited to get back to just writing our own proper LP and, yeah. and really not placing any pressure on ourselves. And I think that's one of the things that's been really instructive is it's like, we really like didn't try to write any singles. Yeah. We didn't ever, we actually didn't know what any of them were until we turned it in. And then people were yeah. like, hey, I mean, we think this song, we're just like, Here's the songs. Here's how they fit together, and this is how we feel yeah. about presenting it. And seeing it sort of connect with people, you know, makes you wonder like that there is something there to just yeah. It can work both ways, but but yeah. when you overthink because you're like, oh, like what's gonna go on a Spotify playlist? Like that's too long for TikTok. We were just like, fuck it, dude. Like who cares? Yeah. Just just write songs. You said also about that personal element of this album as well for you. I think this is also the album where I've heard a lot of people say, hey, have you listened to this track? It reminds me of when I was going through this and stuff like that. Have you found that with your fans as well, that people have kind of come to you and said, hey, this track um, reminded me of when I was going through this or it got me through that? We definitely have gotten, just over the last several years and, and then particularly with this record, just a lot of people saying... Um, that the record has been very meaningful or therapeutic for them or like specifically I was going through a really bad time yeah. or I felt suicidal and this helped me which is like a hard thing for me to digest I think because I just have like a healthy I don't wouldn't call it like necessarily imposter syndrome but just yeah. you know I think it's um, good to cultivate humility and so you don't but but then when when you hear that you kind of have to take it seriously and respect it. And yeah. so that's probably been the most... I can't really think of a higher compliment from people that are, are experiencing your music than it being really meaningful. Yeah. So yeah. that's just been my, the most rewarding part, I think. Yeah. Now, when I said I was doing this interview, a lot of our listeners said you have to ask about Max Payne 3. Um, what was that process like? I mean, there's a lot of bands out there that would probably kill to do a soundtrack or something like that you guys got to do it how did that feel sitting down and doing a soundtrack for a game that you knew was going to be so big well it was a very we knew it was strange at the time and now when i look back on it it's even more bizarre because like we were like a just a noise band yeah. like an unknown noise band and we ended up you know doing the original soundtrack to a game that millions and millions of people bought and played and just had such a crazy profile in terms of um, mass culture yeah. that we had never been connected to in any way. I mean, it was really remarkable Like when they announced it, that we were doing the score. It was like the amount of hate from people on YouTube and Twitter <laughs> comments who just didn't know who we are. They just hated us because it wasn't the next Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, yeah. They're just yeah. like, fuck you, I want GTA. And, which wasn't, we weren't upset. We were like, whoa, this is so interesting yeah. to be involved in like a mainstream cultural event. Yeah. Um, at the time, you know, like like everything in life, it's just sort of incremental. So like we didn't know we were going to do the whole score and then we ended up doing it and then we ended up working so in depth like with their music department um, that by the time it came out, it was like that was just our reality. And it, I, now it's more odd when I look back on it yeah like we were just like kids in a noise band who played warehouses and then we did this this score 
Yeah. So it was a pretty remarkable experience. So going along from warehouses, part of the craziness of the last few years has been Coachella, Wembley Stadium. What has that been like for you, playing um, massive events like that? Like, yeah, it must be unreal standing on stage during those shows. You know, I, what's been more unreal really this year is just our own headline shows have been so... Um, energetic and there's just been such like it's a re- reciprocal ed- like connection to the audience i think that's been almost more striking but yeah i mean it's uh i didn't anticipate that i'd still even be doing this at this stage and that we'd be okay. this yeah. many albums in yeah and i think that there is something that's kind of remarkable about there's a lot of terrible facets about how the internet has affected culture in ways that like might end democracy and destroy yeah. all kinds of things and just from the cradle to the grave now everyone's just staring at their phones on social media obsessed with shit that is like doesn't isn't there it, but in terms of art and in terms of music for us i think particularly there's been this sort of eras and genres and all these things have become sort of unstuck in time and it can all coexist in the same moment. And I think that that has been very beneficial to a band like us where we feel like, oh, maybe we can actually do our most pertinent and best work at this juncture rather than being like, live fast, die young. By the time you're 25, you did all your cool music. Yeah. That doesn't feel like the um, cycle of life anymore. Yeah. And that's yeah. very free. Yeah. I don't know if it's worth the destruction of humanity yeah. through social media algorithmic manipulative bullshit, but yeah. you know, I'll take what I can get. It, it's weird because here in Australia at the moment, there's a huge push. And I was interviewing a young artist the other day, and she said there's a huge push now amongst teenagers to go off social media. I mean, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I feel like that. I feel we're at, we're hopefully at some sort of inflection point. Because, like, Moore's Law, you know, it's like, it can't just keep going up and up, and that's what so many people are seeing, is that, yeah. like, you can't just always ex- expect profit returns that go up, up, up on a 45-degree angle, and more users and more content. It's like, there's too much content, all of it's crap, nobody yeah. wants it. But for small artists, I think that that is, it's this moment to actually make something genuine, yeah. because people are... Can they watch another fucking Marvel movie? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, just vapid, like, it's just content. Yeah, exactly. So I think that, you know, glass is half full. Yeah. Is that people can have an opportunity to make something genuine. Definitely. Well, I mean, to finish off, because we've got time for one quick question, what would you like to say to all of your fans out there that are coming along to these shows in Australia? Uh, thank you so much. It means the world to us. I... I'm shocked that there's just still so much goodwill for our band and hopefully we'll be back soon.